Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to be continuing our intermediate media series by creating our schema. Once we create our schema and attach it to our collections, we'll then be able to move on to things like to generating a form and then submitting the form and actually having something in our database. So let's get going on that right now. Now, before we get started, I would just like to make sure that you do have the collection to package and the auto form package installed before watching these next few videos. If you have the package list from the first couple of videos, you should have both of those. If you do not, go ahead and grab collection to and auto form and add them to your packages file or with the meteor install command. After you have those, let's get going. Okay, so now that we have some basic routes going, let's go ahead and actually create our collection. Now we're gonna be using a package called Collection2, and we're gonna be using Simple Schema which is going to allow us to actually define a schema, which is something that uh, you really can't do without a package like this. Now what's great about using packages like Collection2 and Simple Schema, which is actually part of Collections2, um, so you don't need to install those separately, is that you can also use auto form generators like AutoForm, which allows you to really just specify one Blaze template tag and it completely generates the form based on properties in your schema. So let's head to our collections folder here and let's go ahead and add a new collection. I'm going to say new file and this new file is just going to be recipes.js. Now we're gonna define a collection like normal simply by saying recipes equals new meteor collection and then inside of the parentheses we're going to just give a lowercase string that says recipes like so wrap that up with a semicolon and we have our collection defined so if you had the insecure package still on your website, you could create a form and submit some things to this recipes and it wouldn't be following any sort of general schema. But however, we want to actually define the schema so that we can use auto form and have all this stuff pre-created for us. So let's go ahead and create a new schema simply by saying recipe schema in camel case here and recipe schema is going to be equal to a new simple schema. Now we're going to have parentheses and then some brackets here. So we now have this object, right? So inside of this object, what we're going to be doing is defining some properties based on what we want our collection to actually have, right? So obviously this is a recipe and it's going to need a name. So we'll want a name field and we can just say name. Now in here, we're gonna have another object now this object's going to have a couple of properties. Here we can define things that actually have to do with the auto form itself. We can have, define things that have to do whether or not this is a required field. By default, all the fields are required, so we only have to specify if it's optional. So what we can say is type, and type is a string. And then now we want to have a comma, and on the next line, let's give this a label. And this is the label that would be used in the form field. So we can just say name, Okay, like so. So this is our first property in our simple schema. Let's go ahead and add another one. We have name. Let's go ahead and add a description. Sometimes I like to just abbreviate these things and have them be desk. This is definitely a preference that your team will have to decide on whether or not they want to abbreviate longer words like this. So we can have type and type is also going to be equal to a string. And now we want label. Label is going to be equal to description. Now let's go ahead and add the author of this recipe. So we can have comma and then author. And the author is going to be also a type of string, comma, and we're going to have a label here. And the label is just going to say author. It should be getting a little bit repetitive, but now we're gonna learn something new here. So what we can have is an auto value. So we can say auto value, and this is going to give this a default value. And what we wanna do is have a function that is going to return this dot user ID. Cool, so we are now going to be able to have this author field that's automatically input with this current user's ID. Because of that, at some point, we're going to make some sort of check that makes sure that a user is logged in before they can insert a new recipe here. But for right now, we'll just leave this like so, so that we can actually get going on our auto form. 
And one more, we're just going to add a created at date. So we can say created at colon, and the type is going to be a date, comma label is going to be created at, And now this is also gonna have an auto value, which is going to be a function here again. And this is simply gonna return a new date. So this is going to essentially just, uh, whenever this is created, it's just going to return the current date to the created at field. Okay, like I mentioned before, this scheme has a long way to go. We still need to add the ingredients, whether or not this item is in the menu or not. And we still have some more tricks up our sleeve with how to do some of those things, including working with AutoForm. But this is gonna be great to get started and just to show you how AutoForm's working in the next video. So right now, we're going to have one more step before this is complete we need to attach this schema to our collection. So our collection is recipes. We're gonna say recipes.attach schema. And then we're going to pass in the name of our schema, which is recipe schema. Okay, wrap that up with a semicolon. Now, if we head to our site, uh, we haven't done anything in particular. But it's always nice to, after you make a big change, to just head over to your site, refresh, or, or check out your command line to make sure you're not getting any sort of outrageous errors that you may not have foreseen. Maybe you, you left off a comma or something like that. For instance, if we leave this bracket out here and try to save this, we head back to our site, we refresh, it's gonna crash, okay? So uh, what's good about this is the error log in Meteor has actually gotten much better recently. So it now gives you a little bit more information saying line 26 on collection styles at recipe, there's an issue, obviously the issue's right here, okay. Cool. So we've now created a basic schema and we're ready to go with auto form. So in the next video, we're going to drop in a form to our homepage and you're just going to see how powerful something like auto form really is. If you enjoyed the Meteor for Everyone series and you would like to help support Level Up Tutorials, you can now purchase the HD MP4 videos of that on store.leveluptutorials.com and that will come with the code examples itself. No subscription or anything required. You can just go ahead and download those directly after purchasing. And like I mentioned, if you enjoyed this series so far, these videos will be available for purchase after this series is complete on store.leveluptutorials.com as well. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next